Okay, so now what about the other half of the teleology? Do we see that in religion? And the answer is an overwhelming yes. Each of the five major world religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, all recognize that it's literally impossible to have a list of rules for morality. Reason being, there's too many situations that you encounter. In other words, if there was to be a literal list that governed your behavior and what you were supposed to do or not supposed to do, all that you would be doing all day long would be checking that list. So what develops instead are different teleological examples. Now, if you go through and you read these, you might notice that they're all restatements of what? This is what in Christianity is referred to as the golden rule. And this is what I just find incredibly fascinating about religion, studying religion, is that all these different statements are expressing the, the same truth that no one should do anything that you wouldn't want being done to you. And here's what's even more amazing. All of this is just natural law. We want to live a life that is based upon happiness and that avoids pain and avoids suffering. Therefore, that's how we should treat others. So these are from the, the different world religions which again are Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, Islam, Judaism. Wow, love that. Love it. So now, hmm, is there a natural collection, connection, excuse me, connection between morality and religion? What do you think? Is there a natural connection? And the answer is yes. Now what's interesting about this natural connection is that it helps us to achieve a society. And a lot of people point to this fact as why religions developed a moral code. Because people realize that in order to have a society that works and works well, you need people acting properly. So what happens is that you take the moral code and it develops and then it becomes intertwined within religion. So it's completely understandable that there's a connection between morality and religion. What about the second bullet point? Can someone be religious and not moral? Ooh, this is a tough one. So in other words, imagine someone who claims to be a religious person, can that person not be moral? Well, yeah, that person can make a lot of bad decisions and not be moral while claiming to be religious. But if we think about the, the previous bullet point, we just talked about the natural connection, how morality and religion are kind of tied together there. Wow, so what's it called when this happens? And does anybody know what this is? This is called a sin. What is a sin? This is when someone knows what is right and what is wrong and willfully chooses to do the wrong thing. And this is what happens when someone is religious and not moral. They commit a sin. Now can someone be not religious and yet be moral? Yes, certainly. There are many people who are atheists as well as agnostics who are really, really good people who don't steal, who don't cheat on their wife, their husband, who pay their taxes without cheating on their taxes, 
who went there in Walmart and they see an old lady drop a $20 bill. They don't step on it. They bend down and call attention to it and hand her the $20 bill. There's a lot of people who are moral and not religious. So these are some really good questions we're looking into. So, as always, reflecting upon morality, a little self-check, you should be able not only to define but intelligently talk about and provide some examples for natural law, deontology, as well as teleology. So, as always, be well, do good work, and keep in touch.